Uh, as you walk into the other room, um, there's another pool in the center, and this one is glowing blue. Ooh. You can see like on the left there is a sigil, and on the right there is a sigil. I'm gonna bend down and like touch it, and do shocking grasp on it. I'll do ray of frost on it. You cast your spell, and then the glyph just starts to glow green, and then it starts creating a kind of a, like a whirlpool. And then Rocco gets sucked inside the. <gasps> what do we do? Should we follow her? Oh, oh, let's text her. Can we text her? Oh, we should text her. Let's text her. Is your is your refrigerator <laughs> running? Question. <mark. laughs> and I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Welcome once again to Prepare to Dice, the animated series where a bunch of friends come together and play Dungeons and Dragons. My name is Raghav and I'll be a humble dungeon master for today. So please join me in welcoming the real stars of the game, our ferocious fighters. Hi, I'm Andrew and I play Timbo Wainson. Hi, I'm Christine and I play Rocco. Hi, my name is Renee and I play Bjorn, a soon-to-be warlock. <laughs> Let's prepare to dice. Is your refrigerator running? You're dead to me. <laughs> We're glad you're not dead, though. <laughs> New brick, who dis? <laughs> Does it seem safe over there? As far as I can tell. OMW, whatever that means. <laughs> this method of communication seems to lend itself to acronyms. LOL. <laughs> Should we cannonball in there, Bjorn? Should we jump in? Okay, All right. let's do it. We have to find her. Get sucked in, and uh, you feel yourselves in the whirlpool for a second. You plop out onto the same corridor that uh, she was in and you see uh, Rocco in front of you. It is a long hallway and it's uh, well lit. You can see that there are lamps. This is a much nicer place. I like it more. It seems better lit. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice building. And you can see as you look around, uh, you notice that there's like strange vines all around the walls and the ceiling. And as your eyes start adjusting to this new light, you realize that there are people strung up all over this room. And I am very creeped out by that. <laughs> <laughs> there are people that are like hanging from the ceilings, there are people standing around the chamber, all with vines sort of entrapping them. Uh, these people, they seem to be alive, but in some kind of a daze. Their eyes are wide open, but there's no movement or acknowledgement of your presence. Whoa. Are, I, are any of them close enough to the ground that we can walk up to them? Uh-huh, yeah, you can see there's a one creature over here, this guy. Mm -hmm. I walk up and I try to like shake him awake. Do you know who runs this place? I have some complaints to make. <laughs> he looks at you and he just goes, who are you? Thank you for asking. I'm surprised you didn't recognize me immediately. My name is Rocco. I'm quite famous. You are so lucky to be meeting me today. He, he's like barely, he's like not responding to what you're saying at all. It seems like he's like in his own world and he just says, yes, I see. I pull out the red Kool-Aid water skin and I like squirt a little on his face. <laughs> I need to talk to somebody, a manager, someone faster than you. You pour it on him and he like twitches a little. You can see like all of the vines that are touching him. They sort of like move almost like they're releasing him. And like for a second, he's like, <gasps> help me, you need to help me right now. And then they come back and sort of cover his face and he just like goes right back into his trance. Oh. Ooh. And then you see this, uh, this woman, she has a broom in her hand and she's sort of frozen in the act of sweeping. She's like absent-mindedly sweeping, but her face is blank and her eyes are vacant. And she just says, I know who you are. We've met before. This is terrible. I hate this room's <laughs> ambiance. It would have been a great room without all the bodies. Yeah, I'll walk over to where Rocco is and I'll say, uh, if you guys think you've met before, you may have attended one of Rocco's wonderful concerts. Uh, which, do you remember which venue it was? Uh, we work really hard to make those venues as uh, memorable as possible. And I'm nodding like, yes, this is true. We do work hard on that. Uh, when you say that, the woman who was sweeping, she just sort of swivels to look at you. It's not like her feet don't move. It's more like the, the vines are moving her like puppets. And she just uh, looks at you and she says, You think you are heroes. You protect the innocent and destroy that which you deem is dangerous. Yeah, I do what I can. I'm like horrified by seeing all this. I feel like I have vine knowledge from living in woods. Can I check out one of the vines? Yeah, sure. Uh, make a nature check. 20. Ooh. Oh, nice. Great. Uh, so you walk up to the same woman and you're like inspecting the back of her head, which has the vine sticking out. And uh, 
the more you look at it, the more it reminds you of uh, the kobolds that you fought. Oh. Anything, what if it's like a big ceramorph brain that's controlling all of them? So I point this out to the others. Should we light it on fire? What did we do with the last one? It was a lot of lightning and fire, but I feel like when we did that before, it was attached to a really big creature and it barely survived. If we do that to these, these people who are just apparently normal people, will they survive? If there's a big brain, I take out one of my knives and I'm like, take the knife towards it really slowly, like. <laughs> uh, make a dexterity check for me. Plus three, 16. Uh, yeah, so you pull out your uh, knife in one quick movement, just <laughs> slice the back of her, the vine. You can hear like a little like distant screaming, like a and you can see the vine sort of uh, retracts back and goes up into the ceiling and goes off. And suddenly all of the vine, vines leave the woman and the woman just sort of slumps over, exhausted, and she just like falls down to the floor. I think we have some pruning to do. Yeah, sounds good. Could go around and, and cut folks' little nerve ties to the ceiling. But I hope nothing goes terribly, terribly wrong. <laughs> I think I'll try and wake up the woman, if I can. Okay, yeah, so you go up to the woman and you start trying to wake her up. She like slowly sort of opens her eyes and she looks at you and she's like, am I dreaming? And I say, no, you're awake. Are you okay? M my, my name is Sally. Are we still in the academy? Yeah, we are in the academy. Oh my gosh, I'm part of the cleaning staff. I don't know what happened, but I, I was just cleaning and now and then I was in a dream, like a wonderful dream. Sleeping on the job. <laughs> <laughs> I look around, trying to figure out who else to like cut down. Is this another person? This one, he's like all the way up, like near the ceiling. I'll levitate up to him, because I'm floaty. I don't want to gloaty, but I'm floaty. <laughs> <laughs> Make another dexterity check. 15. So I rolled a nat 20. As you take out the knife to stab him, he just grabs your hand. His eyes suddenly come into focus and he sees you. He says, you could have walked away. You could have washed your hands of all of this and gone to live your woefully miserable lives. The voice that he speaks with is very familiar to you. You have 100% heard this voice before. I wonder if we should do a, a check to see who this person is. If he's from like our shared history. Yeah, make a make a history check. Oh god, natural 20 and then nice. plus 3. I know everything about this guy. <laughs> Looking at his face, it's just some guy. He's like a big, burly, masculine man. You don't know who he is by his face, but his voice sounds exactly like Wolfgang, the captain of the ship. Oh, oh cool. Suddenly you see a bunch of new vines come down and <laughs> into each one of them, and they all rise up. And you can hear each of them speak in unison. You hear all of them speaking, and they say, Well, well I'm, I'm sorry, sorry to, to tell, tell you this, this but the, the day, day is already lost. And I have already won. These, these minds, these bodies are mine. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the den, den of the, the mind flare. And suddenly all of these bodies, they start twitching and then they whoosh, start to descend upon you. Okay, now they seem hostile. <laughs> <laughs>